um, what's going on. Uh, let me know, let me know, let me know. Type in the chat. Streaming with us today, it's Tony here from Paradise Garage and Learn Auto Body and Paint.com. Um, just give me some quick feedback. Let me know. Oh, man, I got to go back to comments here. And for all you Learn Auto Body VIP members, I just want to say what's going on. Welcome, Learn Auto Body VIP members, uh, to the uh, to the chat today. Um, it's your time. Uh, to ask any type of auto body question. Plus, we're going to give you an update on the BMW project. We're going to go to the garage in just a bit um, and show you what's going on there because we just picked up the parts on Saturday. Parts came in. We had to wait about two weeks for the parts. And I'll give you an update on the BMW i3 project. And uh, and we can go from there. So, yeah, guys. Uh, what's up, Jeff? There's Arnold. Oh, you know what the deal is? I totally forgot about daylight savings time. So we're I still go live here at 2 p.m. Um, but I guess the time zones on your side changed. Didn't change for me. So um, my bad. I think we could go 7 p.m. EST from now on, guys. What do you think about that? Um, like do a little quick little vote, guys. Is this a good time or do you want to? Should I start at 3 p.m.? I think for me, 2 o'clock p.m. Hawaii time is good. But uh, let me know. We're just gonna we're just gonna keep going right now. Screw it. Um, we made a mistake. Can I have some peach drink, please? Oh, yeah. How many people's on? Like oh, many. Uh, 15 you right oh, here. 15 for man. now. Uh, what up? What up? Arnold, what up? Tony and Maya. Hi from Los Angeles, California. What's up, guys? Hope you're doing well. well <clears throat> question already. Nice. Okay. Hey, just getting started and doing some body work. Worked on the mechanical side for 30 years. Wow. Picked up a 98 Subaru Outback five speed. I'm starting to work on the body. Enjoy the work. That's awesome, Charles. Um, awesome. Where are you tuning in from? Let us know and let us know if you have any questions on auto body. We're here to help you out. Um, a lot of projects are, are literally in line. We got the BMW. We're going to show you that in like five minutes. Uh, we're going to head down to the shop quick and I'm going to show you the parts that came in and that thing's probably going to be put together this week. Um, I just, it's all, it's all ready to go. And I just, uh, it's going to be put together, probably be spraying it early next week, mid next week. So we're going to have a lot of new videos for you guys. Um, step by step on collision repair. This is a whole collision front end damage. Uh, my mom, I let my mom borrow the the car for a day, and literally the next day, she hit, she hit, she back, rear ended somebody. Four car accident. You know, she rear ended a Mustang. Mustang hit a a van. A van hit another Mustang, and that, it's just a, ridiculous. But um, every thank God she's she's okay. Everybody's okay. Uh, did Maya get that tall? She's almost your height. No, I'm kind of, I'm slouching down right now, like leaning over. See, if I stand up, I'm more like that. Hey, 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 hey. you're tippy toeing. <laughs> okay, we're, we're, uh, yeah. Hey, hey, don't, hey. yeah, don't, hey. yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Jeff Eaton says, because I never get to watch your lives. Um, Street Outlaws comes in on eight on Mondays. <laughs> All right, so maybe what we will do is, yeah, the Mustang got all pushed in really bad. Maybe what we'll do is turn it, turn the YouTube lives to another another time. Maybe we'll change it up. We'll go a different day, different time. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Maybe I'll send the survey out to my uh, to my list, and we'll see what people pick the most as far as you know what time to go live and you know yada yada. So let's see. Um, all right. So I guess we can just go to the, uh, we'll go to the uh, BMW quick. What are you laughing at? No, like the, the sparkling water just got my nose all of a sudden. And I just like, I like, I don't know, I got surprised. Yeah, this is really good. I know. Just like it woke me up. How much sugar in here? Not that much. Seven grams. That's not bad at all. And it's actually a lot more peachy than those. This is really scenarios. good, guys. Non-alcoholic, of course. Yeah. 
tastes so good. It's, it's not really like those good. sparkling waters that smell sweet. It's not sweet. Like those, those are. Sweet. All right. Let's. Let me see. Let me just pause this quick. I think. Oh. All right. Um, how many newbies tuning in just for the first time? Any newbies tuning in? Um, if any newbies are tuning in, I'm going to actually put a link here to learn auto body and paint.com, but let's go ahead to the garage guys. Uh, my daughter drinks that stuff all the time. Good stuff. So, Hey, yeah, we're, they are. we're not the so only good. ones. <laughs> oh, uh, dance is repairing old square body truck dashboard. What type of paint would you use on that? Um, what is it a metal dashboard or some that plastic -y fiberglass? Like what? Oh shit. I got a drip of rain on my computer. Okay. All right, guys. Well, cloudy today. We actually needed the rain. It hasn't rained in like a week. Yep. And um, oh, this, is, this is our paradise garage. Um, let's the put the light on. Oh, guys, I picked up some sweet rims for my mini truck i'm having a problem with it i gotta rebuild the carburetor i tried twice and i have to order a rebuild kit um, but i picked up some awesome looking rims and tires straight out of compton straight out of japan check these out little little geolander mickey thompson's very little though um 145 80 12 12 inch rim brand new um cute you know looks really 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 nice i like it a lot i like it a lot super excited about it looking super cool now better than the stock rims and tires let me close my gate arnold i would love to do that i actually i'm in the process of trying to order a um it's not that i don't know how to rebuild it i know how to rebuild carburetors i've done them before um, it's just that I don't have, I didn't, I, all I did with this was open it up, clean it up, put it back together. still no good. Um, so I'm trying to order a rebuild kit for it. Um, I think I found one on eBay. I'm talking to the guy right now. Um, the other option is just buying a completely another carburetor. Cause it's really, it's running like crap. It's, it's, it never ran the way it did after it sat for a year and a half. It was running really good before I left Dallas. And then I left it for a year and a half. I got there, got it running, and it would just never stay idling. It'll always stall out. Um, I thought it was the gas at first, replaced the fuel, but still, you know, I mean, I don't, it's just a pain in the butt, pain in the butt. Soak them in chem dip. Hmm. Okay. I'll have to prep. Maybe I'll give you a call, but what I want to do is actually just order a rebuild kit for it. Just get all new little insides and all, you know? Um, Anyway, anyway, let's, uh, here is the BMW. Um, we got recordings of everything so far, um, high definition. And um, we have our, this is our brand new bumper reinforcement. Okay. Uh, we got these brackets on each side here. Okay, I still have to bolt them in. Oh, let me see. Okay, you're on. Okay, we got them. these pieces right here. <clears throat> two sides brand new this is what buckled um in the accident <clears throat> so we got both of these brand new uh we got all the plastics we got the front bumper cover right here which is going to be sprayed okay and we got all the plastics <clears throat> if we look over here we got all the plastics for it you know all, everything we got all the parts <clears throat> about about two thousand twenty two hundred dollars in parts um, so we just got to put it together and, and spray it. And what I'm thinking of doing is putting it all together and spraying it, not spraying the bumper cover off of the car because I want to color match and I'm thinking to blend it into the fender here and clear the, clear both front fenders. That's what I'm thinking of doing. So we're going to put it all together, then mask it off and paint it. Okay. Easier, um, better color blend, color matching. And the hood, I'm going to take the hood off and we are going to, I, I got the grills off. Okay. Um, we are going to spray the whole hood black. We don't have to, but I figured why not? Because we got some chips here and there and it's really dull, old looking, a little bit of scratches. 
in here and it, it could really use a nice fresh coat of black paint. So we're gonna put some fresh coat of black on there. Uh, we're gonna touch up the front bumper cover. It's the only real piece. And then the back I took off also because there's a bunch of gouges in the bumper cover itself. You got it. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. So right in here, like we got, I don't know if you can see it, we got scratches and whatnot on the top of the back rear bumper cover. So we're going to be respraying this as well. I figured why not? Let's just do the front and back um, and get it looking good. So you guys are going to get all that content um, on how we did a whole complete collision repair job um, from the home garage here, Paradise Garage. So this is all going to be repainted as well and put back on. I think you got some questions. Um, so let's see. Okay. Uh, somebody said here, Jacob Reynolds. Let's go to. <sighs> okay. Let me go back up here. Mm, I think I, I think seven would be great. Okay. All right, maybe we'll go we'll go live on these this time zone from now on. A little earlier for you. Same time for me, a little earlier for you guys. Uh, okay. Uh, building a 67 Chevelle seam sealer after epoxy um, or after 2K primer. I would say seam sealer you should do after epoxy. Okay, but you could do it after the 2K. It's it's up to you. I would do it after epoxy, then prime it. Then this way you get paint on it. Um, project pilot jet idle is probably clogged. That's why it won't idle, right? I don't know. Arnold, there's so many damn settings on this carburetor. It's ridiculous. And so many vacuum lines. It's like, why do they got to make it so complicated? Like, there's like 20 vacuum lines on this stupid thing. It's a real pain in the butt. Take a look at this thing. And I don't know what the heck some of these pieces are. Um, like, I don't know what the hell this thing is. It's It seems like it's very hard to blow air through. I tried it. But it, it does, air does go through it, you know. I got so many vacuum lines on this thing. You know, I took it off two times, put it back together. I had it off because I was thinking um, I had another carburetor. I bought another carburetor for it. I was going to swap it out, but they sent me something that didn't have a um, – it was more of a manual choke on it, not a electronic choke. So it didn't fit, so I had to return it. Got it off eBay. So now I'm back uh, to, to option, you know, to ground zero, starting out with a with a thing that doesn't idle correctly. It's a pain in the butt. What's up, Rich Reese? What's that noise? That's flying. Oh, honey, what are you doing? <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, so, you know, how's everything going on your end, guys? with everything you know how's everything else going there's lano wait this way yeah mine's getting tall mm. try a haul yeah right i wish i can get a holly on here but i would i would go for an aftermarket carb if i if i knew how to get it to work but there's just so many connections and all that crap you know there's there's like the the water goes through it the the for the to heat it up you know the cooling lines the heater the water actually flows through the carburetor i was thinking of just xing that out and just rerouting it back into the system um like we do with some heater cores on on like classic cars doing a repaint awesome guys so where's everybody tuning in from like what part of the no one wants to come out you can let her out what part of the world I've just been busy, the, like working on the house, you know, doing a few things here and there. Um, they're ready to get this thing painted up and, and fixed up and sold. Probably going to sell it yeah. after uh, we get this thing put together. Probably going to sell this thing. UK. Cool. 
What time is it over there? United Kingdom. Good old UK. So what you doing? I don't know. Chilling? Yeah. No. No. All right, so I'm going to drop some links, guys, uh, for all you newbies tuning in to learn auto body and paint. Here's no. Nala. She's so big now. Nala, you're on the wrong side. you got to come this way. <laughs> There's Nala. Nala. Dude. <laughs> wow, 12.15 a.m. Crazy. 12 Brisbane, Australia. Wow. Yeah, he's up. He's up late. Oh, my God. What's up? Cool, guys. Awesome, awesome. Hit that like button. Yeah, why not? <laughs> what is the like button? I don't Who's know. that? Oh. Go check that out, man. Stay. Um, so I am actually going to be ordering the paint for this tomorrow. Probably going to be getting a maybe a quart of the orange and a pint of black. And also, I'm going to be ordering the paint for the Chevy van project. At the same time, um, I'm really contemplating on a couple colors. I want to go with something stealthy looking. So I'm thinking of the, I know you guys are going to probably be like, oh, that's so lame and plain, but I'm thinking of the, the, um, you might be jealous, but I'm from upper East Tennessee. <laughs> um, the rhino, the rhino gray from the Toyota Tacoma, you know, that flat gray, it's not flat, it's gloss gray. Let me break that. Yeah. My thumb hurts too. Yeah, oh, mine does too. I got an infection in my thumb. Um, what was that, Nala? You really like want part it. Frog, I know. Part frog. Uh, Nala, you just ate that cookie. No. Come here. She's still so desperate for cookies. It's ridiculous. Here. You're lucky I didn't make you do some stuff. Here. She loves those cookies, man. She is ridiculous. She just almost ate that. So I'm thinking of doing it uh, with that stealthy rhino, like stealthy primer color. Portion BMW has the same colors. Hmm. Mm. Um, for the van. For the van. And um, I don't know. I might be doing it that color with with some like like pink or purple graphics. Something crazy on the van. On the van? Yeah. Like Why don't we'll, you do the shark thing that I said? Yeah, we'll do like a shark graphic maybe. We'll see. Because it is that that color over there. It is like a shark gray more than like a rhino gray because it's kind of like navy. Yeah, but I don't think I'm gonna get that same exact color. I'm gonna yeah, do like the a little Toyota. bit different. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll figure it out. But. So we're going to be doing these things quick. Um, as far as the, the Chevy van goes, I think we're going to go with a, uh, a single stage enamel, lay it on super glossy, and then maybe we'll do um, some base coat, clear coat graphics on it. I don't know, to, to get better col colors, you know what I mean? And fading if we want to do some fading or whatever. Did you read that one? <clears throat> Hey, Tony, when blending panels, what steps to take if the blend isn't quite identical? Um, well, the only thing you could really do is buff the adjacent panels out. So I'm not sure like what you're talking about, like where, like if you painted it already, but maybe you had to paint your fender and I don't know what you did. Did you blend into the door with the color and clear the clear it? Like it's hard for me to answer your question when I can't see your blend job. Do you know what I mean? Um, so if the blend, I mean, what you want to do when you're blending, like what we're going to do a blend here and I'm going to show you how to do the blend um, with the panel put on. So we're going to prep the panel set everything up and then we're going to paint the orange and then blend the orange into this fender here so you won't be able to tell um of the the two because if we painted them separately you're you're most likely going to see a little tint difference because this is obviously five-year-old paint 
this is going to be brand new paint and then the color is not going to be identical. But if you look at my Tesla, you can easily see that my bumpers and the rest of the body don't match. My bumpers are, have more of a yellow tinge and it's a brand new car. So it's not just, you know, people like us having issues with that. It's, it's just part of the deal. Unless you're doing a custom job where every part of the car is together and you're painting it, you're not going to get exact color match, you know, and it is what it is because, uh, you know, when new cars, production cars are made, most of the time, the bumpers and extra pieces are painted in different parts of the factory at different times in the body. That's why you never get that identical color match on new cars, if you think about it. And if you, you know, um, but because we did, you know, this car custom, you know, our, our bumper and rest of the car, it all matches. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so, uh, so yeah. So if you send me a picture uh james hubbard or a video if you send me a little picture uh to uh, you know ninja support at learn auto body and paint.com or tony at learn auto body and paint.com um i'll be able to help you out better um again if you did your paint job and ended it at the fender okay and maybe maybe you base the fender and then you cleared the door and fender and it still doesn't match the only thing you could really do is just kind of buff out buff out your door to try to get the brightness out a little bit more. <clears throat> Newfoundland. If my primary surfacer is not glass smooth, will it show through my metallic? Um, well, as long as it's, it's not a sealer. So if, if you have a regular primer surfacer a 2k filler primer or whatever, you're going to want to get it glass smooth by blocking it out before you paint it. Okay, so primer usually needs to be sanded, okay? Unless you're doing a super quick job, you got some thin primer on it and you don't want to sand it, you could, you could blast color on it. You could do that. But if you're doing like a filler primer, any kind of 2K filler primer, you're going to want to block it out with a block um, and 400 grit um, to take the texture off to get it flat to put your silver metallic on or your gray metallic on, you know, especially with metallics, you're going to want to make sure you're painting super flat pieces. Hopefully, does that help? Let me know. Uh, hands guys, let me know. If, uh, what are you laughing at? No, I was trying to like copy what you're saying in the back and I just can't. It's so funny. Uh, Tony, does the color match have to do with something not having the paint from the same batch? Yeah, that too. That too, of course. Absolutely. Um, good point, you know, and, and that's always the case. David says, hey, so I got a fiberglass hood I'm working on and a piece of the front end broke off. How will I replace that and even it out? You know, super hard for me to answer some of these questions, guys, without seeing a video or some images. So like I said, David, if you want to take a little 30 second video, uh, one minute video, you know, send us the file. What I could do is reply to it um, to the best of my ability and help you out that way. You could just send it to Tony at LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com um, or Ninja Support at LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com. All right. Uh, but normally, if you broke a piece off or if you got a piece of fiber, use uh, something called fiber light. Hey, that cat is chewing on my wires on the car. Can you get him out of there, please? Mango. Hey. Arnold, thank you for that. Uh, so you could use a product called fiber light. It's a fiberglass body filler. I don't have any here, do I? No, I got to order some. I don't have any with me right now. But uh, it comes in a little can like this where you can squeeze it out or it comes in a regular metal can, you know, like a low, low pro round metal can. Um, Fiber light or kitty hair. I haven't used kitty hair in a while. I don't even know if they make it anymore. Do they still make kitty hair, guys? Arnold, do you know? Kitty hair, I haven't bought that product in a few damn years, but it used to work really well when I used it. Kitty hair was from Evercoat. Fiber light is, I believe, you, Paul. And that's what a lot of the guys at the body shops are using now. So I'm using fiber light. But kitty hair will do the same exact thing. Here's another uh, Evercoat optics. It goes on one color and it dries 
uh, another color. So it knows it basically lets you, it, it shows you that it's dry when it changes color. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't bought in kitty here in a long time. When I do the van, I have a couple of rust holes on the top of the uh, on my roof of the van. Well, not rust holes. Well, they they mounted. They had like one of those uh, utility lights, those orange util utility lights on top of my van, and I just kind of the guy who I bought it from removed it and he put some tape up there that was leaking. So I put some foil tape on it. But I think I'm just going to fill it with some fiber light um, and body work it and paint it. Um, you know, it'll hold. I'm not worried about it. Yes, I use kitty hair all the time. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see. I missed a question or two. So, yeah, David, if you're working with fiberglass, use some fiber light uh, by you, Paul, or kitty hair. Same type of stuff. You mix it. You lay it on like body filler, sand it, prime it, shape, you know, shape it, sand it, shape it, prime it. And, um, and you're good. So Salmo says I wet sanded it with 400, but there's some imperfections. I can see it, but imperfections are smooth to touch. So will it show through imperfections are smooth to touch? Well, listen, if you cannot feel it, you're not going to see it. If you can feel imperfections, you're going to, you're most, most likely you're going to see it through your paint. Okay. So if you can't feel it, then you're good. Um, somebody says, slightly mismatched panels look better than when people try to fade the good panel into the repainted ones. It depends because if you do a good blend job, it's, it's perfect. You know, you can't even tell. That's what we're going to do with this, guys. I'm going to show you exactly how to really get a really good blend um, when putting on a bumper cover. And blend. we're going to blend these two front fenders uh, into the bumper cover. Okay, and then we're also going to redo the black hood. And once we redo the black hood, we're going to want to buff this out here because we're not going to even touch this. So we're going to buff this piece to bring, bring the black gloss brilliance out to blend in, you know, to match this black. Um, yeah. And then we're going to pretty much buff the rest of this. There's a lot of water spots on this car. It needs a good buffing. So, um, so yeah, this is going to, this is super easy. I can have this together in a day, I'm dead. not even a day. What are you doing, Maya? No, I tripped over that cord. Jeez. Don't scratch my car. Huh? She's over here scratching my car with arrows and skateboards and I'm trying to get the cat out of the car. It's like in your car. Jesus. So I'm getting the cat out. Okay. I think you're like poking it with the arrow. I'm Look at her. Get it Look at her. She, she's like with that arrow, like trying to poke the it cat out. Jesus, these kids. Crazy. Uh, let's see. Ever use AG47 filler? Um, using that for the door that I'm working on so far. I like it. Sounds out nice. Not difficult to work. Uh, never used it. What is that? What product is that? What brand? What's what's the main brand? AG47 filler. Who makes that? Sal Moore says, okay, order the Atom X16 and 20 engages. Can't wait to use them. I think you're going to love those guns. You're going to love them. I love mine. Guys, if you're looking for some awesome spray guns, don't forget to check out Zula.com right over here. Um, check them out. Good, good spray guns. Uh, okay, let's see. Tony, it's all good. She's creating more paint issues for content. Guys, I'm, I'm also thinking of this. The truck looks, it really looks cool. You know, especially with the new rims and tires on it. Oh my God, I love it. But I'm thinking I want to do like a candy, something, something crazy to it. The reason why I left the top white was because I never wanted to paint the inside part of the cab because it was white, you know, but I, I'm not really crazy about the white, to be honest. I want to change it up. Because you said that, they're going to make you paint the inside. Again. I know. I'll, make it I'll probably do the inside now next. I'll do the inside too. We'll do, the, we'll do, it's we'll do it all. It's a weird brand name. Is that the brand name? Zart? The rim? Yeah. Yeah. Zart. Who Zart. cares? Zart I got some Zart. Zart. I got some Zart the fart rims. 
They look good, though. Yeah, they look good. They look good. I'm going to change them out and put a BMW symbol on them. Oh, yeah, you should. <laughs> Why BMW? You can have it like Daihatsu. Yeah, maybe I Daihatsu. Uh, you took the decals off the mini truck. Yeah, I did. Oh, we have some of them on there. Just want to say your videos helped me a lot. I'm restoring a 78 Ford F-150. Awesome. Awesome. Fishing bikes. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for saying that. You're awesome, dude. And you know what? More more content's going to be coming out. It's just been a busy, busy year for me, actually. You know, from moving here, remodeling and all that. And we're getting there, though. We got so literally, guys, this will be painted next week. The van project is next. We're going to be banging that out. Um, and then after that, we're, we're going to be moving on to maybe the Tesla or maybe this one of these guys. We got little projects in between we're going to be doing as well. So a lot of content coming out, guys. And, um, you know, because it's Hawaii and it's never a winter and never cold, we're going to we're going to be able to uh, to to keep painting. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. you know, Forever it's weather. Yeah, you should. Look after we thing. paint the Daihatsu, we should paint this little thing. Thing. With a with a little nail. No. A little toothbrush. Not, not toothbrush. With a toothbrush. <laughs> We're gonna paint it with a toothbrush. This is the lady that's gonna paint it with a toothbrush. No, I was trying to say paintbrush. Paintbrush. Yeah, because it's like a little mini Daihatsu. Yeah, so Arnold, we still got this. We're still rocking the LABAP trucking. This is when I painted it in 2018. It's gonna be a four-year-old paint job. And you know, it got scuffed up and hit here yeah, and there. No, I little scuff down there you know from moving we got some burn rub marks here and there you know up in here we kind of cut through and you know it got it got beat up a little but I, I i like i like the color but i think we can do better i think we can do something that really pops out and uh and make look really really cool oh my flow coat procedure um, basically I like to flow coat over 800. So after you're done clear coating, you can wait however long you want to wait. I recommend a few days at least to make sure your, your clear coat dries hard and solid and cures. Um, but you could wait a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, two months, three months and flow coat. Okay. You can wait a year and flow coat. Um, but my, my procedure with flow coating, if I'm doing like a job for somebody or a regular project, I want to get out and, you know, get the job finished. Um, I'll, I'll paint it. I'll probably give it a good 10 days to two weeks to cure. Um, and then I'll block sand it out with 800 grit. Okay. And just be careful. You don't make, make sure that your, your, your first clear coat is thick. Okay. Make sure you laid on two to three good heavy coats. So when you sand, uh, when you block sand with 800, you don't cut through. You're, you don't want to cut through, okay? Um, so just cut it down with 800 grit. Get it like flat, matte looking. Take the texture off. Then you could basically uh, wax and grease, remove it, clean it, um, tack cloth it, and put two or three coats of clear on it. I think two coats is enough. Two, two medium heavy coats of clear coat, and that's your flow coat right there. Okay, and you could add, if you wanted to, you could add... A little bit of uh, pearl in it if you wanted to so that's pretty much the process of flow coating um we are going to be doing some flow coating on some gas tanks that we have i want to add some additional candy on on one of the gas tanks that i have so i'm going to show you how to do that as well um oh i thought that was the link for learn auto body and paint so yeah if you guys haven't yet subscribe to learn auto body and paint.com we're going to be coming out with a lot of uh, a lot of new content guys a lot of new content um basically revamping what we got and um i, I think it's going to be fun um i'm also going to teach you guys the five p's of painting what do you think about that the five p's of of auto body and painting do you guys know what the five p's are the five p's to amazing auto body and paint finishes how does that sound does that sound pretty catchy master the five p's of auto body and paint the five P's of painting. P's? Yeah, the P, the letter P. The five P's of painting. There's five P's of painting? Yeah. The five P's. So um, so that's going to be coming out as well. The five P's of painting. Little short, little mini course I'm going to be able to give you guys uh, with some short, sweet content. 
<clears throat> Preparation is one of them. Charles, come on, Charles. I'm waiting. Who? Oh, the guy with the video. <laughs> oh, that guy. Anyway, you guys will see. You guys will see. It'll be out. It'll be out soon. I don't want to spoil it and uh, blurt it out right now. All right. Any other questions, guys? We're on for about a half hour so far. Um, any last auto body and paint questions? If not, we're going to call it a day and I'll see you next week, Monday. Um, by then you will see this BMW all put together. Um, we had to do some bending and tweaking to get the hood to close again. And I have all that on, on footage. So you'll be able to see how I did that. We have to bend some things around. We got it to, well, we got it to shut nice. I just didn't put enough pressure on it, all right? <laughs> okay, it was it was kind of like unleveraged. It is 2.36. Oh, shit. Wow, it just popped open. <laughs> well, guys, it's a work in progress. I feel like Elon Musk when he threw the uh, the ball at the windshield. It oh, just my cracked. God. That was intentional. Oh, my God. That was. I hope that was. What was the question Charles had to answer? I missed it. Vinyl dash with foam backing. You know, you could use, you could really use any paint for that. I've painted base coat, clear coat on those vinyl dashes. You know, as long as you're not going to be gripping it and pushing it in, it won't crack. So I had a 67 Camaro or was it my, was it a GTO? I think it was my 67 Camaro um, had a dash like that. So I wanted to get it nice and smooth. So I 2K primed it. I sanded it. I cleaned it really well. I sanded it. I put some heavy coats of 2K filler primer on it, flattened it out. I got rid of all the texture because, you know, those dashboards have a little like a, a little grainy texture to it. Got rid of that. Base coat cleared up. Came out nice. You know, as long as you don't push it in, it, it's not going to crack. It'll be fine. So you could do that or you could just get some regular vinyl spray paint if you just want to go cheap like that. But I, you know, I wanted to get the gloss look on it and it came out really nice. I painted it gold. Because I had blue and gold interior. The outside was blue and gold, and my interior was blue and gold as well. Um, as far as the, the metal, you know, the plastics and the metal. Uh, but my seats and everything were black. So yeah, you could do the you could do base coat clear coat, you could do single stage. Um, I would just say 2K filler prime it if you want to do something like that. If not, you could just get some vinyl um, spray paint, 1K. They have all kinds of colors from SEM. Um, and then, uh, you could just use SEM, you know, and just get that whatever color you want. So yeah, it works. It works. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Pretty much it for now. Hope, hope you guys have an excellent week. I'm doing well. Family's doing well. I hope you and your family, hope everyone's doing well on your end, you guys. Um, and, uh, I think today what I'm going to do is put in a couple hours. I mean, this is really not going to take me long. I can have this whole front together in a few hours. So I'm probably going to work on this, get some footage done for you guys today. Uh, put this, put the whole front together. Um, we got, and the key, the key is to also save a lot of your parts, save your old parts before you throw them out. Okay. Because you're going to need them for, uh, for guidance. Cause some like, let me see if I don't want to get this computer wet, but let me just come out here. So I got my I got my bumper, my old one right over there, right? So I saved it because there's a couple of bolts and pieces that I need from that to put on this bumper support. Okay, so don't throw any old... I did throw out the old uh, plastic bumper cover after I took out our parking sensors and clips and whatnot that we needed, right? So I did throw that type of stuff away. Um, I threw our old under guard splash splash guard away after i took these out these clips they're good to save i didn't think they were going to come come with it brand new but they did um but they're good to save all these little clips and stuff you you know you get a little uh, container and you save all these things because hey you never know you might be working on the bmw again in the future you might be working on the chevy in the future you start to save and accumulate all these little parts and fasteners and clips and whatnot and they come in handy 
I have a whole, um, a whole freaking organizer filled with uh, car clips. This is not it, but this is like electrical rivets and whatnot. But you just save all those things in something like this, and you have it. You know. Uh, hey, thank you, Arnold. Appreciate it for being on, buddy. Do you need to put an additive in the paint for bumpers since they are plastic? No, you don't. You do not have to. You could add. The only thing you really add is flex agent. But, I mean, regular paint is flexible anyway unless you're really going to be bending your bumper in half. And I have a video coming out this week, Thursday, uh, when it comes to paint and flexibility, um, when it comes to paint and cracking and whatnot. That's coming out on, on Thursday. New video coming out. Short three or five minutes. Um and you'll see that this week, Thursday. All right, guys. So thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Tony here from Paradise Garage uh, and LearnAllAboutBodyAndPaint.com. Thank you for your time. Um, really, uh, really appreciate you tuning in. Um, again, I'm just going to drop these last links. If you're a newbie, um, get your free training at LearnAllAboutBodyAndPaint.com. And, Paint .com. and uh, also, if you're looking for cool spray guns that really work well and they come with a, uh, the gun but ultra lighting system, um, check out Adam X spray guns. Um, I think, uh, I think you'll like it. So guys have a great evening. Um, I think maybe we'll just start going at 7 PM Eastern from now on uh, a little earlier, still same time zone on my end, 2 PM here in Hawaii. And, um, we'll just, I'm just going to tell my team to make sure when they remind you of emails to basically say 7 PM Eastern, um, 6 PM, uh, uh, central from now on. All right, guys, have a good week. Um, new video coming out on Thursday. So do not forget about that. Got a shaved head, cut my hair. <laughs> I'll see you guys. Uh, see you guys around. Aloha. Have a good one. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Peace.